All right, folks, welcome to the uh, follow episode on shimming the uh, jibs. As you uh, saw in the last video, I managed to crack this uh, factory g uh, gib for the uh, carriage because I was simply torquing down too hard and I had the um, set screws here to manage the distance set out too far that caused this thing to arc and this I found out is made of cast iron which is brittle hence why it cracked. I shot a quick email to the folks at Micromark and they sent a replacement in the mail free both for the part and free for shipping so certainly a shout out to them appreciate that. Um, I spoke with some folks on the 7x12 mini lathe group and they recommended you know something a lot of people do which is to get rid of these cast iron ones and upgrade um, they do not recommend aluminum because it will wear. Uh, better options would be either brass or steel. So um, here's the situation. I've got some work I need to get done uh, before the holidays, so I'm going to go ahead and use this replacement part. But I think when I'm uh, doing some traveling for the holidays, I'm going to be uh, at a place where I've got some access to bigger equipment and some steel, so I'm going to go ahead and make a couple replacements of these out of uh, some form of a uh, steel. In the meantime though, what I am going to do is just quickly show you how I'm shimming these. I shimmed the back one here and slid it on and I've got a pretty good fit. So I'm going to go ahead and do the front give. As you notice, I've torn down my whole uh, cross slide. You'll see this here in a second. I've got the uh, gibs laying on there, so I don't want to turn over right now. But quickly what I wanted to show you how I did this is, uh, and this is my first time working with shims, so this is probably some pretty... Uh, you know, crude looking shim work, but hopefully it'll do the trick. I took a piece of um, 032 aluminum sheet metal or aluminum sheet, and then I used a just a pair of tin snips here to cut out this notch to uh, pretty close to a flat surface. And I set this in a vise, and I used a flat file, oops, as shown here. And when that piece is in the vise, I just filed this down so I got it nice and flat. What that allows me to do is set this shim right over there perfectly. Now, I didn't think about it. I should have gone ahead and made the shim the full width. I was experimenting with a different design earlier, and it just didn't occur to me. But um, it should work for now with the little side pieces, which are important. Otherwise, if you don't have these shims on the outside edges as well, when you set the two uh, screws here you'll end up pinching and bowing the cast iron again and that's no good. You'll also you, you'll run, run the risk of both breaking the cast iron plus your uh, gib will be tighter on the ends than it is in the middle and the idea here is to have the gib flat across at just the right height. So what I did was this piece of 032 aluminum and then I used two pieces of uh, this is three thou inch brass shim stock which I bought from Enco. This is uh, 60 inches so 5 feet, uh, 6 inches wide, 3 thou thick. I think it was only $15 and that's probably enough to last me for a decade. Um, cut out two pieces and that was my sort of test fit to get the right feel. I guess the theory behind this is that the gibs um, actually aren't supposed to be riding or wearing directly on the ways but rather you know a thou or less off to give you the right uh, tight fit. Um, the whole reason I'm having this problem is I was using a boring bar and my whole carriage was wobbling um, ever so slightly but but certainly noticeable enough to affect the boring bar operation which is why I've gotten into this whole operation. So what I want to do quickly here is uh, just show you um, I'm going to set these gibs on here. It's a little tricky here. I need to use two hands in a second. Um, do that, put my gib back on, tighten it down, and I'm going to show you the fit I get. Okay, I laid the gib um, just over top of my shims, and then I put the center screw in, just snugged it down, snugged down the side too, and now, um, now that it's snug, I can adjust the shims a little if needed. Um, the most important thing, make sure they're snug here, is that they are not protruding um, in the um, path of the V groove there and you can see they shouldn't be the same with my other one. Also a very important point is to note that I'm not using 
the factory included standard uh, Gibb, I don't, I'm not sure what these are technically called, but the Gibb spacers that they normally use to uh, adjust this same sort of concept as the shims, but obviously those are only providing two points of spacing, whereas the shims provide a consistent point, which should allow me to get the Gibb flatter, which will also uh, improve the contact when it's set to the right, right height. Um, just in case you were confused, now that you can see, um, this is actually, hold on just so you can get a clear picture here this is the part I'm working with and in order to get to the uh, front gib here I had to remove the piece here which is uh, you know where you've got your um, you know uh, half nut and uh, your um, carriage assembly um, rack and pinion piece so let me go ahead and tighten these down a little more and then we're going to take a couple other quick notes. One reason it's uh, really nice to take off the uh, the bottom assembly here is that it makes it much easier to slide this part on and off the mill, or excuse me, the lathe. You don't need to worry about where the lead screw is. Um, it's also just simply lighter, um, not fun to drop one of these things on your uh, foot or your leg. Uh, but interesting observation here, the um, shimming that I used in the back is very, very good. It's hard to show this on camera, but barely any movement. Um, in the back piece, back side of the gib. Interestingly, the same on the front gives uh, you know way too much movement. So what I'm going to do is um, take a look and see. I just think I have to use less uh, shim height. All right, folks, I'm back. Uh, not going to lie, this one was a little bit of a pain in the ass, but um, that's partly because the only materials I had to work with were either 32 um, thou aluminum or the um, three thou uh, um, brass shim stock and the shim height required for this front gib ended up being uh, about seven of the three thou gibs, so 21 thou. Um, what was interesting was that the um, right side of the carriage seemed to be a little bit tighter, so I put an extra piece um, on these two sides. So it's uh, sort of 21 thou over here and 24 thou shim over here. Um, you know, pretty much the difficult part was laying all the shims on top of each other and then tightening them down securely. Also, once again, making sure that they, uh, the shims aren't protruding into the path. Um, if I had to do this again, I would definitely buy some thicker shim stocks so I didn't have to deal with all those, you know, seven shim pieces. And I'm not sure if that's actually going to stay over time. They might, uh, you know, wiggle loose or cause problems because there's so many, but hey, give it a try and see. Also just wanted to comment that I'm tightening these down pretty tight. I would say definitely, um, you know, well beyond snug. Um, you know, you don't want to force them down to the point where you are tensing the cast iron or, um, you know, cracking it. My hope is that because these are um, the shim stock means that this should be staying uh, flat, that I'm not going to be putting a curve or a wave in it like the, uh, like the one that I broke here. So, Tighten down pretty good, and let me just hop over here and show you how. Okay, here's my uh, lathe bed, and I'll just take this and slide it on. And as you can see, it will slide, no oil on it right now. Um, it's a little snug across, actually it's interesting, a little bit snug across the waves, but if you feel, what, what I'm happy about is that there's really no movement um, allowing the lathe to rock this way um, on the, allowing the carriage to walk, rock that way on the waves, which is what I was trying to eliminate. So um, I'm going to go ahead and reassemble everything and see how this goes. Thanks everyone.